This, 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 this show is brought to you by Safety FM. The following program is rated MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Finally, show with the balls and call it like it is. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. Countdown to audio torture. The Rated R Safety Show starts in three, two, one. Ah, let the eardrum pain begin. Forget the corporate bullshit. This is the Rated R Safety Show with your host, Dr. Uh, it doesn't matter who the host is. Well, 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 well. Here we are in another lovely day of the week. Yeah, that's what we have going on. Another lovely day of the week as you and I are hanging out together doing the things that we do. Uh, So, yes, it is Friday, June the 25th of, let's see, 2021, day 176 of the year. And let's see, uh, uh, what is it? What time is it? Oh, it is two minutes past the top of the hour and only 189 days left to go. Anyways, we are broadcasting live from the Safety FM studios in Orlando, Florida and coming across the multiverse of Safety FM. And then we're kind of hanging out with the sister station doing the things that we do there. So, uh, you know, those people, those people. Another great hour of Freeform Radio. Or is it Radio Big? So there you go. Don't know if you've been looking into getting into Friday as we are right now. So it is fr- 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 Friday, so we can get that moving and grooving. Uh, we're going to be all over the place today because that's what we tend to do around here. So we'll be a little bit of here, a little bit of there, a little bit of wherever you're at. So today is the Friday edition of the show. So we do whatever you want and kind of go and move and groove and all that other kind of fun stuff as well. Anyway, so let's start getting into it right away and start talking about what we're seeing across the trends you know the brand new trends so let's talk about what is going to be on the video on demand services coming up for this weekend not a lot of new stuff coming out but let's talk about them according to what is trending new to disney plus wolfgang new to hulu false positive and safer at home wow that sounds very encouraging um and then new to netflix is the ice road and wonder boy so i have a question with of course new movies coming out If you are aware or not aware, or you might be aware, today, 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 if you are a F9 fan, yeah, I did say F9, you are a F9 fan, do you know that the new movie of Fast and the Furious is coming out? Or it is out. Or if you were up late, probably it is out. I don't know. So are you going to go plan to watch that thing? I'm just asking, you know, it it is only part nine in a movie series. Yeah part nine so some stuff to think about so a lot of stuff going on in the show today we have the phone line open 866-930-SFM1 probably better off with the text messaging just throwing that out there as some idea so we got that going on uh the other portion is we'll go back and forth and kind of make it whatever you want if not i'm going to go into these plot hole ideas of some craziness that i want to possibly do but whoever knows what we're going to do around here because i never know what i'm going to do uh just kind of the way that it works out from time to time wow the screen looks really dark today and i mean that in the best of ways the darkness has arrived or has arrived inside of this thing. Anyways, let's get you to our friends and feature story, and we'll get that moving and grooving. Here is the news on the Rise of Our Safety Show. From feature story news in London, I'm Benji Hire. Rescuers continue to desperately search for survivors trapped in the rubble of a 12-storey residential building north of Miami, which collapsed on Tuesday. At least one person has been killed. 99 are still missing. What caused the 40-year-old high-rise building to collapse remains unclear. Iris Spitzer has the latest. At around 1.30 a.m. local time, an entire side of the 12-story oceanfront building just north of Miami Beach fell to the ground, killing at least one person. A local official says 99 people remain unaccounted for, although some of the building's residents don't live there year-round. Around 35 people were rescued overnight. There had been construction on the building's roof, although it's unclear whether that is related to the collapse. 
Officials in Argentina and Paraguay said that nationals of those countries are among the people still missing, including the sister-in-law of Paraguay's president. The couple arrested by Belarusian authorities after their Ryanair flight was diverted last month have been released after house arrest. It comes after the EU introduced fresh sanctions against Belarusian authorities over the incident. Julia Chapman has more. The parents of Belarusian blogger Roman Protasevich and his Russian girlfriend Sofia Sapega say both are now out of prison and under house arrest. The legal reasons for this move remain unclear. Protasevich faces several criminal charges, including organizing mass riots. Sapega is charged with inciting social hatred and discord. The couple was arrested in May after their Ryanair flight was diverted into Minsk. Belarusian authorities claimed there had been a bomb threat on board, but no explosives were found. European leaders have condemned the incident as a hijacking. The UK government's expansion of the country's green travel list does not go far enough. That's the warning from industry leaders following changes to holiday destinations from which people flying back to Britain won't then have to quarantine on British soil. The addition of Spanish and Caribbean islands is welcomed, but much of Europe still remains on the amber list, meaning travellers would have to quarantine upon their return from there. And the UK's health sector. Secretary Matt Hancock, who is married, has been caught on CCTV kissing a married aide who he hired. They're seen embracing a few weeks ago, despite there being some social distancing restrictions in place at the time. But Transport Secretary Grant Shapps believes no rules have been broken. Whatever the rules were in, 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 at the time were uh, followed. There was a point at which social distancing uh, rules were, were changed. But look, I don't want to uh, comment on somebody else's private life. Last month, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's former chief advisor Dominic Cummings told MPs that Matt Hancock should be sacked for his failings during the COVID-19 pandemic. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks, taking a look today at the labour market in the United States, a barometer of where the country is heading economically. New jobless claims remained above the 400,000 mark for a second week in a row. That's the number of people signing on for unemployment for the first time, a number the White House would like to see substantially falling. Job openings in the country are at record highs. Greg McBride, chief financial analyst with Bankrate.com, says he expects the combination of economic reopenings and a strengthening labour market to lead to renewed declines in unemployment numbers. We've seen some hopscotching back and forth over this 400,000 threshold in terms of weekly unemployment claim filings. The progress has slowed a bit in recent weeks, but I wouldn't read too much into it. Different states may have different backlogs. There may be different reporting intervals that can make some of that reporting lumpy. So the longer term trend is what counts. So we've come a long way from the beginning of the pandemic as uh, virus cases recede, vaccinations improve, you know, all of that very suggestive of you know, a labor market that, you know, is, is going to bring people off the sidelines, uh, jobs that are going to be filled, and an economy that's going to continue to power forward. But it is also a labor market that is structurally changing, with evidence of higher than usual numbers of retirements, as older workers who have sampled working from home decide to stay there. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. A reminder again of our top stories. Rescuers continue to desperately search for survivors trapped in the rubble of a 12-storey residential building north of Miami, which collapsed on Tuesday. At least one person has been killed. 99 are still missing. The couple arrested by Belarusian authorities after their Ryanair flight was diverted last month have been released under house arrest. And the UK government's expansion of the country's green travel list doesn't go far enough, according to industry leaders. That's the latest feature story news. I'm Benji Hart in London. You are listening to something magical. <laughs> You're listening to the Rated R Safety Show. You know how sometimes you're out and about and sometimes you have to access a report, maybe your bank account, maybe something that's important to you, but you don't want other people to be able to access it? I know you're probably sitting there for a moment going, well, why don't you just go into incognito mode and use that instead? Well, let me tell you something real quick. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browser's history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website 
you visited. And that's why even when I'm at home, I never go online without using ExpressVPN. It doesn't matter who your internet provider is. It can be Verizon, Comcast, or even AT&T. The ISP in the U.S. can legally sell your information to ad companies. ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites that you visit. ExpressVPN also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the times, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background and is so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all of your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse for you not to be using it. Protect your online activity Activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired. Wired. Visit my Wired. exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash safety and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash safety. Expressvpn.com slash safety to learn more. Welcome to Calvin's Barbershop. You all got to see this. I don't even want to know what you're looking at on that phone. Well, you should. I was learning about the dangers of high blood pressure and that we need to get ours checked regularly. High blood pressure can increase the risk of heart attack or stroke, but this text program can help keep it at a healthy range. Just text Barbershop to 97779 to sign up. I'll get right on it as soon as I'm done with this baby panda video. <laughs> text Barbershop to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. It's it's important to plan ahead for emergencies, like, like the storm. storm. When, when it kicked in, we had we a were plan. Separated. We, we were able to get in touch with each other in no time. Idea how to find each other. The, the whole, whole experience, experience was, fine. was the most frightening ten hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm to and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Okay, so there you go. Fifth, uh, hold on, 13 minutes past the top of the hour. This is Coco Arrests Me. Coco Arrests Me. This is the Black Banks, or the Blacktop Banks. This song's readily available on Spotify and iTunes. Yeah, Coco Arrests Me. Coco Arrests Me. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Let's get back into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, what? What happened? Did you do that out of sequence? No, I did not. I did it on purpose. Anyways, to continue talking, let's talk about what's going on according to the hit list. Yeah, that's not a joke real quick. So here you go. It's going to be a hot one. According to multiple outlets, there is a shortage on air conditioners. Demand for AC units is surging ahead of the hot summer months with many office buildings reopening after the pandemic and needing to replace dormant units or upgrade to the clean air alternatives. Brad Dunn, vice president of marketing for the sales of United Cool Air, fears that the extreme weather and power outages uh, to outdated and dull AC units have compounded to become the perfect storm for the industry. Prices for AC supplies and units also have increased over the last six months and are expected to continue to rise. Uh-oh, do we have another thing like the wood <laughs> shortage going on right there? So something to think about for sure. Uh, Disney World has been busy removing gators from its park and other properties in Florida. According to the Orlando Sentinel, the Mouse House... Uh, worked with trappers through the state wildlife agency to remove over 250 alligators. The cleanup efforts started after two-year-old Lane Thomas Graves was killed in June of 2016. A gator at the Grand Floridian Resort, Disney has since added warning to guests of reptiles in their waterways and built wall along the edge of the lagoon. 
So there you go. Some interesting stuff. So there you go. I'm like, I've told you, this is your show. We'll do whatever you want to do. And the fun part sometimes becomes that I don't know what to do when I'm hanging out here. So if you're kind of sitting with me and you're not telling me, hey, what you want to do next, I will go into this, some of my craziness and go from there. So it's been a long time and it's been a while. So I thought I might give you something, as a, a, as a friend of mine would say, a special treat, <laughs> as you could say it in that fashion. But let's do something totally out of the ordinary that might shock a few. So here you go. Well, hello and welcome to another round of Around the Safety Podcast. Welcome to Episode 5. We have taken a listen to what you had to say, and we have changed up the show just a tiny bit. Don't worry, we'll still get you out in 30 minutes or less. But we did listen that 10 clips didn't have to be the cut, that you wanted to hear more information on what exactly was going around on the safety pods. So we will do that for you here today, bringing you the best clips that we could find from around the world of safety right now on around the safety podcast in the mix i have been within aviation for nearly 20 years i have been flying until 2016 as a pilot and have always been interested in you know, CRM and human factors topics, and I've been teaching that uh, the last couple of years. Um, so that is what I do today. And actually, Nippin, I was also thinking about when we talk about selling soft skills, uh, this is to a certain degree what I'm doing. Um, I'm just trying to create a different perspective. But I would actually also like to bring in that I do the CRM training and I have done that with, uh, you know, the very best of intentions based on how I uh, interpreted the rules of uh, how we actually teach CRM. So it's not until recently, after I started at Lund University, that I actually started to, you know, broaden my view and, and see it from a different perspective. I do understand that it can be difficult to see it differently if we are not really um, taught uh, in a specific manner or seeing the, the broader perspective as well. But for now, I'm in, you know, overwhelmed in my thesis work uh, at Lund University in Human Factors and System Safety. And it's been a great gift being there, also a bit of a, a challenge as well. That's what I'm actually doing today. What I would do now is just to, for the sake of our listeners, state what is it that this podcast is about and just to make the focus really clear. So the title of the podcast is a little bit humorous. It's called The Role of Soft Skills in Crew Resource Management Training. So we will occasionally use the word CRM or BRM, but it, it basically means the same thing as it is in the aviation world. It's the same uh, concept, at least in, in the maritime world. So that's CRM. And what we are saying is that, are we being sold the icing without the cake? The question that we'll be asking this podcast today is that, what is the importance of soft skills in the CRM training, particularly when it comes to addressing the competence requirements in high-risk industries? And the argument that I would like to put forward is something like this, that the notion of soft skills is not understood very well when it comes to CRM. It is actually sold as a replacement for experiential knowledge and skills, which some people would refer to as competence or technical knowledge, rather than being complementary and in many ways an add-on to it. So we are seeing soft skills slowly replacing the need for the technical knowledge and experience that you need to do your job. And that, in my view, is dangerous. There's a, a lot of emphasis on uh, soft skills but very little on the technical knowledge and skills of people. How do you think about that title, Gitte? I can relate to that. But when we talk about technical knowledge, we're also talking about the experience of it or the lived experience of the work and how this practical knowledge is also a part of it that we leave out when we are just addressing soft skills. <laughs> So that clip comes from embracing differences with Nippin Anard and Giddy Dam. 
Yeah, she was the guest on there. Has to have the best name in the business. Anyways, that's episode nine. Are we being sold the icing without a cake? There you go. That's what's going on now. I have to tell you, as we go through the mix of things that we get to take a listen to, it's always interesting to see what might come up next. Welcome to the Industrial Talk Podcast with Scott McKenzie. Scott is a passionate industry professional dedicated to transferring cutting-edge, industry-focused innovations and trends while highlighting the men and women who keep the world moving. So put on your hard hat, grab your work boots, and let's go. The, 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 when you start talking about the Petri dish, I mean, it, it really requires a lot of collaboration. I mean, you have people in the field, and, and, and because I've been in the field, you've been in the field, they, 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 they know what's going on. They there, there is a recognition that hey, this is hazardous. Got to be. I mean, there is a the safety uh, mindset. Do you find this this academic type of uh, approach with the people in the field? Are you seeing more collaboration to work for greater solutions? Yeah, definitely. I mean, so like you said, I mean, uh, workers out there, you know, I might, I might, I might argue a little bit that don't necessarily know always what they're seeing, and and. I would I would say that that's what science is telling us, and that's where the safety science comes Interesting. in, and that's where um, this, this approach called energy-based hazard recognition uh, kind of had its genesis, and it's it's basically recognizing that human beings have a lot going on in our daily environment. There's so many so many stimuluses coming in, and it's one of those things like when you get in your car and you drive home and you end up in the driveway, you know, like you don't really know how you got there, but yet you did all kinds of like complex risk and motor analysis and you you, you got there, right? Well, it's the same thing in a yeah. job site. When you go out there and you're, you're asking people to do things, a lot of times they just go in autopilot and we're only recognizing hazards that we have um, really our senses for, basic senses for, so like motion and gravity. Um, we have basic primal senses for that, but it's those higher level hazards like electrical and pressure, just to name a few that we don't really necessarily have a sense for, that takes a separate part of our brain to recognize. And so what the science, what, what we did as, as industry is we were always checking this box, failed to recognize hazard, failed to recognize hazard. And so then we came to the academics and we said, hey, why do we always have fail to recognize hazard as a root cause analysis? And then they took that and they started looking at, well, how does the brain work? What's the psychology of it? What's the Ew, technology of yes. it? What's, how do you actually see the world? And that's where the safety science part is really starting to come, come to fruition. See, I, I think that that's really interesting because you're absolutely correct. I, you, you know, you go to a lot of these organizations around the country, whatever, safety, and safety is important. Don't get me wrong. And it, it has to be an elevated conversation for all to have, right? And, it, and But what companies got into is like, hey, all right, for recognition, we're going to place this poster right up against the wall and say safety, look, look you know, and, and trying to create awareness that way. But then when they would leave, go through the door to their work, uh, they don't remember that poster. Well, why is that? Why, why is that the, the case? Why do we humans um, uh, want to cut corners? <laughs> you know, I, I think uh, it's – it's a lot to do. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, context that goes into that. You know, I mean, um, I guess you know when I drove to work this morning, I didn't drive the speed limit, I, and I don't really think I was trying to cut corners. I don't. I mean, I guess technically I was cutting a corner. I was going a little faster than I should have, and I left the house a little later than I should have, so I was, you know, cutting a corner. But but in the moment, I was just I was just getting to work, right? And that's how workers view their day as they go through the work it's not this it's not this linear thing it's this very complex performance boundary that has all these different touch points that the only the worker can see and so we think because we put a poster up there that was the touch point that we saw back here in the office but we didn't see all these other things these production um, schedule uh, environmental issues that are that are pushing the performance boundary for the worker and that's why you know it, we have to if you think the poster is working and you're seeing it's not, it's because you're not going down and asking the worker what does work. If, if that if that kind of ties together and makes sense. 
Well, that clip came off of the Industrial Talk podcast with Scott McKenzie featuring James Upton. I have to tell you, I've been taking a listen to quite a few of those podcasts, and Scott really has it going on with his podcast series. If you haven't taken a look to that one or taken a listen to it, make sure to go by to his website and give him a check. Let's continue on with Around the Safety Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. You know, I tell you, Freeform, I tell you, I never know what I'm going to do on Fridays. And I always kind of look at audience participation. But, hey, when it, when it's up to me, I will just kind of throw whatever out there just to take a look around to see what happens. So if you're not familiar with Around the Safety Pod, yes, if you're not familiar with Around the Safety Podcast, this is a show that's normally exclusive to Safety FM Plus, just in case. That's what it is. So here's the thing. We did a lot of that of those podcasts or a lot of those shows starting off like right off the bat. And the interesting thing here was as we were doing them, we came to the realization right away that we couldn't actually ke- well, let me say let me put it the other way. They couldn't keep up with the amount of content. And when I say they, meaning the people that are putting out podcasts for the amount of episodes we were putting out. So that was kind of an issue. So we had to slow it down. Now, I will tell you, it has been several months at this particular point since we've actually released anything. So I've been looking into it again. And I think we're ready to go to a second round of Around the Safety Pods. So probably be on a very close lookout. Now, this is probably a second or third time that I said that we're almost close on doing it and we haven't done them. But here's the gig. We haven't done them because there wasn't a shitload of content. Now there is. But then again, we have seen probably so many podcasters pop out of the blue. But here's the thing. And I'm going to tell you the truth. A lot of the safety podcasts don't have safety stuff on them. And I know a lot of people can argue about that on this show. Um, I'm saying the exact same thing, and that's cool. That's perfectly fine. But here's the thing. Ours is a sarcastic show that talks mostly about the news and safety and how we find the news and safety. And keep in mind that this originally started off as a rant show, and then people got a little bit hesitant about ranting, which I get. I understand that. But who knows? You know, it is what it is. We'll always talk about that and kind of go forward and make some other things. Anyways, let's kind of get you back into the normal scene as I am I'm moving the camera all over the place here. So, you know, I will tell you, I get to interact with a lot of interesting people. We should probably talk about this for a moment. And I always think that when it comes to the world of what we do, people try to have a duality. You know, they are the Bruce Wayne and Batman of things, if they can be. The Clark Kent and Superman of things, and whatever the hell Wonder Woman's name is. But you get my point. But I don't understand on how, at times, people think that organizations don't know what you might be doing outside of your normal thing. So, if you are a heavy social media poster... Duh. And you start talking about, hey, I'm not allowed to talk about what I do in my personal life or what I do as I am moonlighting because I don't want my job to know. There might be a problem. You can't put stuff on social media and expect your job not to find out. It just kind of doesn't work that way. I always find it interesting on when you kind of get these weird, these weird turns on things. Like, if I show up and I'm somewhere and I'm rocking a a Safety FM logoed shirt and say, hey, I work for an employer and I don't want them to know about Safety FM, but I post about it all the time. I post about everything that I do on Safety FM and I have a employer that I still report to. That might make it a little bit interesting. Don't know how that duality is supposed to work. Now, I don't know what you do. No, like, I can't honestly say what you do, like, currently. But have you ever had a issue where you've had to have this duality thing going on? Where you've had to do this thing where it's like, oh, I'm going to have to do this because I don't want people to know about that. It's like, aren't you kind of like just living a lie? It sounds like it would kind of suck. Oops. 
Oops. What did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. Anyways, let's talk about some things that are going on. There is a shortage of fireworks this year. It sounds like there's a shortage of a lot of shit this year. Last year, an estimated 255 million fireworks were imported by the U.S., uh, mostly from China. This year, suppliers have shrunk by 30%, according to NBC News, due to the shortage prices have gone up. You're going to blow the shit up anyway, so what does it really matter? I mean, go somewhere and watch it. You know, if you live on one of the lakes next to the theme parks, I'm just saying here, um, the fireworks li- uh, li- lose their allure. They lose their allure to them. So just something to think about as you're talking about it. Anyways, nearly 900 Secret Service agents tested positive for COVID-19 since the beginning of the pandemic. Documents obtained by Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics Watchdog Group show that 881 agents were infected by the virus between March 2020 and March 2021. More than half of those agents, 477, worked directly with the with the president and vice president and their families and a spokesperson for the secret service told the associated press that maintaining the health and welfare of its dedicated workforce is top priority so there you go some things to think about good morning there inside of the box not for me my friends and colleagues do avoid commenting on my post on my fb post yeah i got you i mean i understand I totally understand what you're saying there. Now, what I find interesting is that, that I get the lovely opportunity all the time to talk to all kinds of people. And then they, there's the assumption that certain things are going to be off kilter or are going to be considered private that you can find online and not that hard to find online, which is the other fun part. So I don't know. I don't get it. But, hey, everybody has to do their own thing and do whatever makes sense to whatever the hell they got going on. So there you go. Uh, So let's take a look. No man can serve two masters. If you're putting out a podcast, everyone will eventually find out. Most large companies have a non-disclosure confidentiality agreement so you can get in trouble, big trouble, on on the subjects that you might cover. Well, that's the thing. If you're going to take – if you're going to do a podcast, a newsletter, or you're going to sell your safety services – as an outsider and still have a normal quote unquote job, you should probably have that conversation or see what your moonlighting mood lighting clause is, but don't try to get onto an interview and then all of a sudden turn it around and be like, Oh, I can't talk about it. And the fun part is that when we do interviews on this show or not on this show, on the other show that I host, most of them are live. So it makes it kind of awkward because watch this. So let's talk about this that you do right now work-wise. I can't talk about it. It's on your social media. So how does that work? I mean, it's just weird. It's just a weird convo. It's a weird conversation, but whatever. I'm just the guy here trying to make the radio stuff work. Yeah, trying to make the stuff the radio stuff work. Anyways, before I get too far and into the weeds, let me make sure that I get Johnny Smalls to tell us real quick about what's going on inside of the world of the stocks. So here you go. Here's your Market Beat Minute for Friday, June 25th, 2021. Equity markets continued to rebound Thursday despite the impending threat of rising inflation. The rally may come to an end on Friday, however, if the PCE price index is hotter than expected. On a technical basis, the S&P 500 set a new high Thursday and looks to go higher, but there is a risk. The indicators have not yet confirmed the bullish breakout. The biggest question in the mind of traders now is how will the market close on Friday? A down day would confirm resistance at an all-time high level and likely lead to lower markets Monday. There's not much on the earnings calendar for the next week, but the economic calendar is full. Top of the list is the monthly non-farm payroll data due out Friday, and it once again is expected to be a big number. You can get the inside track from Wall Street's brightest minds delivered directly to your inbox every day at marketbeatminute.com.
Okay, thank you, Johnny Smalls, for that one. And that's John Smalls from the John and Heidi Show. Uh, so here's what we found. Wall Street added an already positive week in all three major stock indexes it gained during Thursday's session. The Dow surged about 322 points. The NASDAQ rose about 900, or excuse me, 900, listen to me, uh, 97 points. And the S&P uh, lifted about 24 points. The market notched additional intraday gains as news broke of the one trillion dollar infrastructure plan that had been agreed upon in the groups of by the senators. Okay, so FedEx lost more than four percent on Thursday evening through it had exceeded analyst forecasts for its recent reports. So there you go, some things to talk about for sure. Anyways, let's continue talking about some other things um, going on inside of the world. So. Let me talk about that because I want to make sure that we don't get too far about it. If you start doing a side gig, as they're talking about in the box, at what point do you decide to disclose that with your current employer if you're not self-employed or if you're not a gig worker? And listen... I worked for a pretty large company that the same letter repeats three times. And I was able to talk about stuff all the time and not bring up who they were because I didn't talk about shit that was going on there. I talked about stuff that was going on inside of the world. Because here's the thing. What people tend to forget about is that the world of safety is intertwined inside of the world of news. Because regardless on how you look at this, that news that is being spread throughout your organization, that news that is being spread on TV, that news that is being spread on the newspaper has some format, some format of safety tied into it for the most part. You just have to look. What people tend to forget is you have to look. If you don't look, you don't see it. Like somebody used to tell me all the time, the devil is definitely in the details. We are now video streaming the Rated R Safety Show. I don't know why our host has a face for radio. Rated R Safety Show. So anyways, let's continue a little bit more here. Some other stuff. One person has died and at least 10 others were injured in the 12-story apartment building near Miami partially collapsed early Thursday morning. According to the Miami-Dade County Fire Chief, 55 units collapsed around 1.30 a.m. 35 residents were rescued from the building, and two people were removed from the rubble. On Thursday afternoon, 99 people remain unaccounted for, but it's unclear if all of those still were missing when the building collapsed. Major, excuse me, I always want to say major. I don't know why. Mayor Charles Buckett told NBC Today that it looks like a bomb went off, but they were pretty sure that the bomb didn't go off, but it's something else. He noted that the building, which was built back in 1981, was undergoing roof work, but it didn't believe that it was a contributing factor to the whole thing. Uh, This is an ongoing developing story, so I'm sure we'll have more to talk about when it's all said and done. Anyways, investigators found more than 600 unmarked graves at a site formerly residential school for Indian children. The bodies were discovered in the Mariel Indian Residential School, which operated from from 1899 to 1997, Canadian Prime Minister Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that they terribly saddened to learn of the latest discovery. The find comes after remains of 215 children, some as young as three years old, were found on a buried site in the Canada's largest indigent residential school near Calypso, British Columbia. So there you go. That's some information there. Uh Some rough stuff there for sure. The truth is out. The South African mom who claimed that she had been given birth to 10 babies was never pregnant. According to the investigation by the (laughs) providential government, no hospital in the Providence has had any record, any record (laughs) of Gus Bison Hole ever giving birth, let alone giving birth to 10 children. Sid Hole remains hospitalized pending a psych evaluation. Her husband has not commented on the news. Well, I mean, he could have said straight up that she was never pregnant. I mean, he had made some media claims, but never said that uh, that she wasn't pregnant. So that could have that could have helped out a little bit. Just throwing that out there. 
Anyways, jobless claims uh, fell slightly last week. New filings about 411,000 down from the prior week's 418,000. Nearly 3.4 million Americans are still on traditional state unemployment benefits. The data the data comes from U.S. job openings soared uh, to a new record 9.3 million in April of this year. So there you go. A lot of stuff going on inside of there, and that is for sure. Oops. What did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the home of real safety talk. You are listening to Safety FM. We'll be right back. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. Look at this little face. I do not love him. Hamilton the Pug, Instagram star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States and the Ad Council. You make sure his toys don't have any sharp edges. You taught her what to do when the smoke alarm goes off. You do so much to keep your child safe. But are you using the right car seat for your child? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. For information on the right seat for your child, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. So you see, son, good manners are important. Should I go through it again? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome, and excuse me. Sit up straight, hold doors open, don't speak with your mouth full, keep your elbows off the table. Share your things, play nice, and generally treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Got it? Got it. And stop picking your nose. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. My name is Julius Gaines, creative writer, poet, photographer. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. So I interrupt this very important show to discuss this important matter with you. And here's what I want to share. You know that for years I have been telling you on this show that I don't sleep too great. Well, over the last few months, I've actually acquired a Helix sleep mattress. And it has changed the way that I sleep entirely. Listen, I have to tell you, for years, I have struggled day in and day out or night in and night out on how I sleep. But ever since I went to Helix Sleep and took the sleep quiz, it has changed my way of sleeping. All you need to do to be able to encounter this luxury in your home, just go to helixsleep.com slash safety. That's helixsleep.com slash safety. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix Sleep is offering up to $200 off of all orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash safety. That's helixsleep.com slash safety for up to $200 off and two free pillows. More sarcasm than Mortal Kombat beat down. Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so there you go. A lot of info inside of the world of ours as we're going about. It is 44 minutes past the top of the hour as you and I are hanging on this fantastic Friday, getting you ready for the weekend. Uh, whatever the hell you're going to be doing over the weekend. Hopefully some fun stuff. I always kind of hope. So anyways, shop from home and shave. Calories, yeah, not a joke here. Here's a bit of info that might save you time. Uh, if you save your diet this weekend, skipping a trip to the grocery store leads to a fewer junk food purchases. That's the conclusion of a study published this week in the Journal of Nutritional Education and Behavior. Researchers tracked that spending... Par- 
patterns of 137 shoppers and found that uh, that people who grocery shopped online spent the average of $2.50 less on, on healthy food purchases like candy and frozen desserts compared to the ones that actually go shopping in person. Well, the study do, don't look into why shoppers spent less money on, on healthy food than they shopped online. The research the researchers said that they are likely the reasons of, redu- of reduction in the opportunity of impulse purchase. And that the fact went to that when you shop online, you don't have the kids along to beg for the tasty looking but unhealthy items sounds good but we both know that you're going to pick up the donuts later anyways and on the other hand the shop from home you don't have to burn any calories by walking around in the store so i support um you know it's it's kind of a wash and the other portion it's not the kids that are doing the begging it's you know the adults trying to fight internally saying hey uh maybe this is not what i should be doing Safety in a way never heard of before. The Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. Oh, so before we get too far down the line here, let's talk about our 30 seconds of fame that we talk about all the time here on Friday. So what we like to do on a Friday is give you 30 seconds, take out all that pent-up aggression that you might have had, uh, give you 30 seconds on the clock. That way you can scream and shout, let it all out, and let all that funky stuff get out of your system before we get into the weekend. So if you're taking a look... I'll give it to you on the screen. If you're not taking a look, I'll give you a countdown. So we're going to start that clock in three, two, and one. Uh Uh-oh, it sounds like the time's come up. Okay, there you go. I don't know how we ended up with Drag Me Down. This should be Lift Me Up, if anything. So there you go. Anyways, 47 minutes past the top of the hour. We are still hanging out here on Rated Eye Safety Show on Radio Big FM and on Safety FM, if you're kind of hanging out and doing the things there. Uh, let's talk about some other things that are going on inside of this lovely world. Let's talk about some of the of the news of the weird here. You may have heard that there is an online petition circulating to keep Amazon founder Jeff Bezos in space. By Wednesday, more than 110,000 had signed the change at change.org demanding that Amazon founder be kept from returning to Earth and participating in the first human space flight launched by his company, Blue Origin. But here's what you not, may have not heard. Another petition for the same uh, for the same site is calling for Bezos to purchase and eat the Mona Lisa. Why, you ask? According to the description, nobody has eaten the Mona Lisa, and we feel that Jeff Bezos needs to take a stand <laughs> to make it happen. It has come more than 13,000 signatures. Bezos, world's richest person with a net worth of $201 billion. If you want to see more into this, this is not a joke. You can go to tinyurl.com slash B3J2C5P2. That's tinyurl.com B3, or excuse me, slash B3J2C5P2. I'm not sure if, if he'd do that, but I'm sure Amazon could find something similar that he might like. So there you go. Um, some <laughs> something to think about <laughs> for sure there a british man has earned his way into the record books by sna- uh, by stacking five m&ms on top of each other 23 year old will cut bill said that he had a long dream of getting in his name into the guinness Bur- world of, of work oh my god the guinness book of world records but it's still until the covid19 lockdown that he was eating a bag of m&ms and being bored and he decided to see how many he could stack Quote, I started thinking, I wonder if there's a world record. And so I took a look online. Um, and for the most part, he had never seen anybody had done it. The only thing he could find was that he had ever stacked was a four. So Cut Bill filmed his attempt for two to three hours before he managed to stack five M&Ms. That's, folks, that's it, folks. 
Brit does something when the pubs are closed. So there you go. I don't, I mean, is, is it hard to stack five M&Ms? I'm just asking the question here. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thrown off by this. I would think that it would not be that hard, but I, then again, I could be absolutely wrong. Um, I would think that when it was all said and done, that that, that would probably be an easy feat, but apparently a five M&Ms is kind of a big deal. I guess. I don't know. Anyways, did you know University of Notre Dame um, researchers have found that married men who avoid pitching in at home usually end up having higher incomes than husbands who digitally help with household chores? A lot of people aren't going to like this one, but the study determined that selfish husbands who avoid domestic chores have more resources to devote towards their career. Consequently, they usually earn more money. They're going to need the extra cash for the divorce settlement because nobody else is going to put up with that shit. Just throwing that out there. We at Safety FM are not responsible for what this idiot behind the microphone is saying. He is trying to be entertaining. Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so let's jump around a little bit. Uh, No winner for Tuesday night. Make a million drawing. Tonight's drawing will be for $50 million jackpot or a $34.9 million cash payout. No winner for Wednesday night's Powerball drawing. Saturday's drawing will be for $75 million jackpot or a $53.4 million cash payout payout so there you go some interesting things going on inside of that side of the world it is 51 minutes past the top of the hour at the top of the hour we will be bringing it well no i will be moving over i won't be bringing in i will be moving over to radio big all the time there um and then all of a sudden you can still hang out on safetyfm.com if you so desire to do so if you don't like it well i got somebody that might be able to help you out nobody's life's easy And sometimes life presents us with mountains that seem too high to climb. But that's when I dig in. When push comes to shove, it comes down to your will to win. I'm a trial lawyer, and a trial's a heavyweight championship fight. Figer Law won't back down, we won't give up, and we never give in. Ever. Okay, that's our friend Jeffrey Figer. You can find out more information at FigerLaw.com or 1-800-A-WINNER. That's 1-800-A-WINNER, just in case there. Anyways, let's continue talking about some other things going on inside of this lovely world of ours. Back on this date... Uh, let's see. Take you back a look at 1993, The Late Night, with David Letterman airs for the last time on NBC. The show ran for 11 seasons. Later that year, he would begin hosting Late Show with David Letterman on CBS. Yeah, that was back in the days. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Also on this date, back in 2009, Michael Jackson dies of acute profile and Benesson intoxication at his home near Los Angeles. The coroner would rule his death a homicide, and Jackson's doctor, Conrad Murray, would be convicted of an involuntary manslaughter in 2011. Jackson was 50 at the time of his passing. Talking about some other stuff, let's talk about some day. Well, now let's talk about some birthdays real quick. Uh, let's take a look. Brian Walker, reality star, uh, turns 28. Mackenzie Johnson, DJ, turns 30. Bonaga Mathiba, 34. Sheridan Smith, 40. Busy Phillips, 42. Lala Anthony, 42. Layla L, 44. Linda Cardellane, 46. Angela Kinski, 50. Del Curry, 57. Ricky, Jar- Ricky Jarvis, 60. And Sonia Sotomayor. Yeah, how does the Supreme Court justice make it onto there? Uh, 67, so there you go. So if you're looking for something refreshing to do over the weekend, a little refreshing drink, let's talk about an Aloha Martini, uh, (laughs) courtesy of food.gov. If you want to know how to do this thing, the Aloha Martini consists of one and a half ounces of vodka, a, a quarter ounce of apricot brandy, and one ounce of pineapple juice. Something tells me you're going to have a good, uh, you're going to have a good weekend. Put all the ingredients into a shaker with ice. Ch- shake until chilled and strain with a martini glass. And there you go. You'll have something going on this weekend for sure. Uh, anyways, we want to talk about some days of the year that you can celebrate over today. Let me tell you about some of those. National Strawberry Parfait Day. National Catfish Day. National Leon Day. National Log Cabin Day. Oh, I, I have a friend that loves log. Uh, National Food Truck Day and Take Your Dog to Work Day. Huh? 
In some places, that's every day that that seems to occur. So anyways, that's some days of the year that you can celebrate if you're so inclined to do so. Uh, So let me tell you about my friends at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Know that you are not alone. Whether you have struggled with suicide yourself or have lost a loved one, know that you're not alone. Hear about personal experiences of people in your local communities whose lives have been impacted by suicide and depression. To find out more information, go to AFSP.org. That's AFSP.org. AFSP.org to find out some more information, or you can call 1 800 273 TALK. That's 1 800 273 TALK, or text the word TALK to 741 741. Gonna tell you, can't do what we do without you in this planet. So nobody can take your role kind of the way that it works. If you're not struggling yourself, it's always a good resource as well to go to to be able to know how to interact with others when this problem does arrive or even be able to give them more information on what to be able to do next. So like I said, AFSP.org, that is the American Foundation, as I'm losing my mind, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. So just go there for more info. Anyways, 55 minutes past the top of the hour as we are hanging here, you and I together on this lovely Friday. And let me get you into some whack facts real quick. The sun shrinks about five feet every hour. Think about that. No one knows the, the who named the earth, because that would be kind of an interesting thing to find out. The average square yard is of the sidewalk in downtown Mexico City it was about 70 wads of discarded gum. So there you go. The word idiot comes from the Greek legal term, meaning one who doesn't vote. In the first season of Sesame Street, Oscar the Grouch was orange. David Hasselhoff's divorce settlement awarded him the catchphrase, don't hassle the Hoff. And that is not a joke. That is not a joke. You can look that one up. That is legit. Okay, so let's go through it real quick. Um, The Global Polio Eradication Initiative uh, just released a $5.1 billion plan to eradicate polio uh, by 2026. It's hard to believe that we're still um, fighting polio. It's one of those things that you have to be reminded every few years that it's still around like David Spade, a virus, you know, that kind of thing. People who who are enjoying the first week of summer, kids everywhere are playing baseball, football, basketball on their iPads. Singer Rebecca Black, Lana Del Rey, and Chris Allen all just celebrated birthdays, or as we all should, should call it, furthermore, be known as the real day that music died. Throughout, throughout <laughs> thought of the day, smiling 70% is more attractive than wearing makeup. Don't smile too much or your makeup will crack. Did you know that according to the Bible, you shouldn't have sex before, mag- ma- before marriage, pleasure yourself, get a tattoo, or eat pork? It's true. Hell, I have a cousin who's done all of those things while waiting in line at a tractor pull. I'm just saying, just something to think about. Okay, let me give you a random joke for today if you do need one. So here you go. Um, I'd kill for a Nobel Peace Prize. If you need a phone starter for today, try this one. What's the worst example you've seen? A t- Hold on. What is the worst example you've seen of tourists behaving badly? Uh, just come down to Orlando. You'll see all kinds of them. If you need something for the water cooler, try this. According to to kids, this is the worst thing about being in a car with parents. What is it? The parents singing. Anyway, so there you go. That kind of rounds it up. If you want to hang out at RadioBig.fm, please do so. If not, hang out here on SafetyFM.com as we'll be bringing you more safety stuff. Anyways, thank you for taking a listen to what we have going on today. It's always important. When we get to hang out with you, the most important part of both stations, and that is the listener. Anyways, if I can leave you with a deep thought for today, I would love to leave you with this one. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with your heart. And that one came from Helen Keller. Anyways, I hope you have a great weekend. God permitting, I'll be back on, I'll be back on Monday. I know who you are. You know who I am. Love you, mean it, and goodbye. 
The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen.